So we're going to do a few proofs that involve our procedural definitions. Um, and we're going to do the very one of the most basic ones. So we're going to take a look at the commutative property. So we're going to prove for all sets A and B that A intersect B is equal to B intersect A. All right, so here's how we're going to start this. So we're going to say, let's let X be any element. Okay, and let's let A and B be sets. All right. Now remember, to be able to prove that um, that two sets are equal, we have to prove that A is a, or first set is a subset of the second subset, and then the second set is a subset of the first set. Okay. So here's case one. So for case one, let's let X be an element of the first set, which is A intersect B. All right. Now, at this point, what we'd like to do is we'd like to get rid of that intersect. And to do that, we're going to have to go back up and we're going to have to utilize this definition. This A intersect B is true if A is an element of A and A is an element of B. Okay, so we're going to say by our procedural definition, we're going to say that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. Remember, another tool that we need at our disposal is the, is the laws of logic or those um, basic logical inferences. Okay, so we're going to say by our laws of logic and specifically we have the commutative okay. this means that A is an or x excuse me is an element of b and x is an element of a so this is a really low level sort of proof that we're doing okay it's very fundamental right so it looks like some of these operations are very um would be taken for granted all right but this is the process that we're going to utilize okay now we're going to utilize the procedural definition one more time and we're going to take x is an element of a and b and x x is an element of b and x is an element of a and we're going to go backwards okay so we're going to say by our procedural definition we can say that x is an element of b intersect A. <clears throat> and so what we've done is we've shown case one to be true. So we can say, hence, since X is an element of, so we're going to say, since X is an element of B intersect A, we can say that A intersect B is a subset of B intersect A. Now that's only case one. Now we have to do it the other way. But fortunately, in most of these proofs, once you show it one of the two ways, the other way is, is basically going to be the same process. All right, so case two. For case two, what we're going to do is we're going to start by saying, let's let X be an element of B intersect A. By our procedural definition, We can say that X is an element of B and X is an element of A. Right. We're going to use our commutative law of logic. So by the commutative law, sorry about that, law of logic. We can say that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. Okay. And then finally, by the procedural definition,
just like we did before, we can say that x is an element of a intersect b. All right. So now we know that since x is an element of a intersect b, this means So this means that A intersect B, or excuse me, B intersect A. So let me go back. This means that B intersect A is a subset of A intersect B. Okay. And then finally, by case one, and case two, we can say that A intersect B is equal to B intersect A. An application of this in real life, um, we're going to see a little bit later that these are going to be some of the most fundamental definitions necessary to prove larger sets. But also for those of you that are computer science people, think of this like assembly programming, where you have your pop, your push, your store into your registers, those sorts of fundamental operations. This, is the, this mirrors the same low level sort of operations that you would need to be able to conduct assembly programming operations. So parallel it with that as well.